bad things I did as a kid. I just think my brother and I used to just rip up our house. Yeah? Yeah, all of the doors in our house didn't work. Or were broken. Every door except my parents' bedroom door. Because that was a door that was like, if we broke that one, we totally would have got the shit beat out of us. So, Did you ever break any windows? Um, We broke my brother's window and the garage door windows multiple times. You know, like in the like your garage door to have like glass. One of the very first times I met you, yeah, you you were just about to get your garage replaced. Yeah, because you probably had destroyed it or something like. Yeah, that. we and it was it was maybe like the third or fourth time we got it replaced. My brother and I used to play soccer, and that was our goal. And as we got older, we started kicking harder, and we just shatter the glass in my brother's window, and then shatter the glass in the garage. Um, yeah, I don't know. Looking back, that actually is pretty bad. I feel like that would be super annoying if you're a parent and you come home and Oh, just thinking about when you're when you have kids. Yeah, I'm like, damn, that's gonna suck. House. That was bad. Yeah, I didn't have a door. My door got ripped off the hinges. My sister's door was broken. It wouldn't shut. And what was their door... style of did they did you ever get grounded or what was how how would they try to tame you? Uh we would get spanked or very, very rarely belted. Okay. Um my mom would pull our hair and throw us in the pool fully clothed and then lock us out of the house. And we'd like, did it ever work? I mean, not really. We still like, the, the thing is like my mom, my mom didn't really like punish us like physically because if she would like, at first it was, she would kick us out of the house, but then we would just like run over to our school. Cause our school was super close by and like plan the playground there for a couple hours and then we'd come back and eventually she'd let us in. So like all the punishments they threw at us like weren't like that bad to us except when we would get hit. I remember there, I never really did anything as a, as a kid to warrant getting super, super punished. Mm -hmm. But I remember the first time that I can remember getting super grounded. I, I <laughs> used to, I used to live in Las Vegas and next, our next door neighbor was this like old guy who played tennis and he was kind of like, oh, I'm not really doing anything on the weekends. I can teach your kid tennis. Uh -huh. And, uh, I remember <clears throat> it was like two blocks away, the tennis courts from the house. So I would walk with him to the tennis courts and then I could usually walk back by myself. Mm -hmm. And this particular day I walked over there, I must've been like maybe four five, four or five, five or six. And uh, on the way back, I saw one of my friends from the neighborhood. So I was like, what's up, dude? Let's hang out. Let's hang out. <laughs> He's like, you can come to my house. You want to tell your parents? And I was like, nah, we don't have to tell my parents. So you went over to his house. So I went over to his house. Yeah. Um, and then it starts, it, as, as my parents will tell it, it started to get dark and they were freaking out going to the tennis courts. You walked alone Nobody with this there. tennis coach. Didn't yeah, come going back. to the tennis yeah. coach. Tennis coach isn't home. And they're like, oh my God. <laughs> and uh, then as, as my mom says it, she heard my giggles from inside the house. And she called up my aunt. And she was like, I don't know what to do. I'm going to strangle him when I see <laughs> him for causing me this bodily harm. Like, um, And... Then she opened the door, was super calm about it. Oh, we hey. got back. Yeah, we got back home. And then she said, go to your room. I don't want to see you. And that was the first time that that idea of like that being a punishment, like you can't be in my presence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I remember putting post-it notes on the Hot Wheels and sliding them out the door. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Please let me out. Dude, oh my God. Your parents really hit you with like the I'm disappointed in you. Yeah, they just, she... Yeah, they were just like, go to your room. And then I remember there was another time in that same house. It was winter time. And I don't know. I, I thought, I guess I must have thought that this was, I was talking big game. But I don't, I don't know what it was, but I used to always be super sassy with, with my dad growing up. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. Like, he, because he also kind of always had a short temper. Like, he's not, he wasn't ever super, super patient. My mom was super patient, but... I remember there was this time where my dad said to me, he said, you're skating on thin ice, Sholo. <laughs> and I was a kid. I took that very literally. literally. I took it, took it super literally. And I was like, what? On that ice out there in the pool? <laughs> <laughs> like, that, like, that was, like that was some genius comeback. Say. And he got so mad. <laughs> he, I remember he went out to the garage because that's where his records were and his DJ uh -huh. setup. 
was, and he slammed the door to the garage, and my mom was like, what was that? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. Go talk to him. <laughs> Go calm him down. Go That's calm what... down your woman. Yeah, I never, but that was, those are the ones, yeah, those are the ones that I remember <laughs> being the most, like, kind of. I never really talked back to my parents. No? At least I don't, no, I don't think so. My parents were always so, they were, they're also really smart and witty. So I always was like, ah, I would go back to my room and. <laughs> Dude, I remember as a kid going, ah, it's like you couldn't, like I wouldn't scream into pills or anything. She'd be like, ah. Just go I used to bite my DS and be like, ah. <laughs> fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> my oh dog, my god, my baby didn't like, like that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I don't know. That's how I that's how I got it. <laughs> no. And then I remember my dog is that my dog would be like, What the heck is going on? Yeah, you're like <laughs> my dog my dog that was my little sidekick in my room would be like, What the hell is going on? Oh my gosh, there was this one time. Okay, I don't know if I've told this story on the pod before, but uh one of my earliest memories, and this this must have been before Oshun was born. I had my own room. I remember it was dark at night. I had the glowing stars on the ceiling. Bruno Mars, Just the Way You Are, was playing on the radio. Oh, nice. And I was sleeping, and I was like, oh, I got to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> I must have been like four. <laughs> so I threw up. <laughs> <laughs> On the side, right on the side of my bed. Yeah, I was a little kid. I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I just remember being like, kind of hazy. Like, what's going on? What's going on? And I was like, oh, it's still dark. Uh, a little wet pile. I was like, ah, oh, whatever. I'm just gonna go back to bed. <laughs> and then I hear my dog Mooney's go up on the bed. Whoop. And then just. <laughs> 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 and then I remember waking. I remember waking up and being like, damn, that was a crazy dream that I. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> that was, that not, was a dream. not a dream. But shout out, shout out, Mooney's. Pour one out for the homies. Shout out, Mooney's. She, uh, that was my dog. Okay, yeah, clearly. That was my dog. I remember. Ride or die. Yeah, ride or die for real. She was like, Did you ever wet the bed as a I'm kid? Picking up the slack. Um, not far, far and few between. Like, oh, okay. Uh, not, not often. Were you, uh, did it happen Cereal. to you? Cereal. Cereal. Cereal bed, bed wetter. wetter. Yeah. Did you ever, was it, like, I remember having dreams, but those dreams would always cause me to wake up like nightmares, where I could, or I could be like, oh, I'm peeing in the dream, because that used to happen to me a ton as a kid, yeah. where I'd be like, oh, I, I must have drank too much, I have to pee in the dream, mm -hmm. but then I would think, oh, shit, I'm in a dream, <laughs> I know I'm in a dream, I can't piss myself, you know, you're just like, ah, because I, I remember I had feeling so many... really good in dreams to pee as a, I don't know why, but I just remember it being... So feeling. I had so many beach dreams, so many swimming. I would constantly dream of me swimming in the ocean. Wow. So are you admitting to peeing in the ocean now? I can't believe you. You dirty dog. How dare you? Do you really pee in the ocean? I pee in every pool I go to. <laughs> <I do. laughs> you're a liar. I pee in the pool. I yeah. Pee I was like, you're lying. You don't pee in the jacuzzi. <laughs> you don't pee in the pool. Okay, but wait. The jacuzzi? Wait, so if, if you were to take a bath, yeah. would you pee in the bath? Um, depends on how bad I need to pee. <laughs> you wouldn't just get out? Pee sterile. What? What? Pee sterile. I guess, but it's uh, kind of... All right. Well, when I was a kid, I used to pee in the bath. I honestly... I, I don't want to say I wouldn't pee in the bath. It stopped because I stopped taking baths, not because I stopped peeing. But pee is not sterile. not sterile. Pee is not sterile? No. The fact checkers have arrived. And we have I don't know. I've always decided. heard pee was sterile. Well, no. What about in uh, in uh, Surf's Up? That's a movie. But they also don't. They pee on his, uh, his wound. Well, if you get if you get bit by like a like a Portuguese man of war, or a jellyfish, you gotta pee on, to pee on it. Pee on it. Yeah. So it's good for you. No, I but no, <laughs> but I used to, I used to pee a lot, wet the bed a ton as a kid, and I would always. And it really does feel better than any other pee. I will say though, every once in a while, I'll I shit myself. Well, no, 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 I've never. I actually never shit myself in bed. Every once in a while, I'll pee, 
and I'll have like this weird thing. It'll feel like I'm dreaming because the pee will be like, feel so great. And I'll be like, and this has to be a dream. Is this a button? That was just, it was just kind of odd. Yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while that was like TMI. Me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But before we get into more urine talk, can we do a welcome back? Welcome back. Yeah. That was a, that was a, an intro. Three, two, one. What's up? What's going on? It's the Lone Lobo Show. Woo! Welcome back. Uh, I am one half of your uh, delicious uh, podcast host, Shola Money Duena. I am the trash brain half, Jacob Scott Thomas Bertrand. Trash brain half. That, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <clears throat> Here is one little last bit, though. When we were talking about, uh, I, I wanted to get from the source a firsthand uh, uh, shout out from someone who had a history with you as a kid uh, and, and your bad experiences. So I got a couple of clips from your mama of what? stories that, of, mm -hmm. of things that you did as a kid and we're oh gonna play them God. out right now. So let's play, let's play the first one. Wait, There's two. what? He was in first grade and I think it was like the third day of school <laughs> in first grade, the teacher passed out um, a contract. Oh, this one is that cool. <laughs> every student would obey and follow all the rules, you know, this and that, and they all had to sign it. Well, I got a call from the office because Jacob refused to sign the contract. Classic Jacob. And the teacher, you know, said, You need to sign this. And he said, No, I'm not going to sign it because I don't know if I could, you know, obey the rules every day <laughs> and so she was really she wasn't a very nice teacher but she <laughs> called another teacher from first grade to come in and that teacher said jacob you need to sign it or you're going to go to the office and he grabbed onto his desk with his two hands and he said i am not going to the office but i'm not going to sign this i need to think about it so i guess the school principal wasn't there and so they oh, called Mr. the Knox. sixth grade teacher who was like the vice principal. Mm -hmm. And so he came in and said, Jacob, you know, can you let go of your desk? And, you know, we can think about the contract. And he, so he went with Mr. Knox and got to sit in his sixth grade classroom. So Jacob comes home, you know, I go to the office and all that, but Jacob comes home and he was so happy and he said, all the girls were so nice to me in sixth grade. They kept sitting there and they gave me their snacks and they said, oh, he's so cute. He's so cute. And he said, I like sixth grade more than first grade. <laughs> what, what can you I think say? About that? I like older women. From, from a first grader player. But also what a, what a noble thing of you to say, I, I can't sign this paper. I don't know if. I just remember being, I remember that moment and just being really confused why they, I needed to sign it like in that moment. I was like, why can't I read it and like think about this for a little bit? Well then. Because it was, it was basically like a code of conduct. I just signed this like code of conduct that said like, I'll respect everyone. I'll follow all the rules. I'll only speak when spoken to and like all that stuff. And I was like, I'm not going to do that stuff. Like, I don't do that stuff all the time. Like, how could I sign this and put my name on something that I know I, I break? And well, good thing because we don't have to play her next story. But her next story was a story about you stabbing a kid in the back. With a pencil. So, <laughs> so clearly was funny, that was would, that was also in first grade. So yeah, so, so you had premeditated already <laughs> that you were about to commit a crime. You were like, nah, I don't want to breach the contract. So just give me a second <laughs> to think about. Ah, okay, now I'll sign it. Um, so yeah, you got into a a bit of a ruckus. I'll tell a, a little quick one, and I don't know because my mom brought it up, and and maybe it'll get cut, but. I remember my eighth grade year, I, I thought it would be funny to sneak out of the house to go try to see a girl at night. And I got caught. And of course. And very famously, I got caught because, yeah, I got caught. <laughs> <laughs> my dad. Shows dad in the back going, by me, by <laughs> me. He got caught by me. Yeah, I, I well, I don't know. Are we going to, maybe we'll break down the whole thing. 
Yeah, do, do we, the whole thing. Are we gonna break? Yeah. Do we need another perspective? We got it. Yeah. Well, no, no. His perspective, he probably blacked out of anger. He was. No. He just was seeing red that whole day. But here, I'll, I'll break it down a little bit. So, if we're if we're breaking it down all the way back, there was this girl who was like, he's like, so I was in love, right? <laughs> I was in lust for sure. I was, I was an eighth grader. I was yeah. I was I was a I was a small boy, <laughs> and this girl had said, "Hey, if you come over." On some very J. Cole wet dreams type yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And she went. So I was Bing. like, of course. Let me just go inside and make sure my p- parents are asleep. <laughs> so I went inside. Mom and dad are asleep. Oshun, my sister, who I shared a room with at the time, <laughs> asleep. is asleep. So I can sh- grab the penny board and skate my way on <laughs> down. So I, but the doors are locked and our doors, <laughs> our old ass doors are like, <laughs> <laughs> Every time you open them, so I was like, can't be doing that. Let me crawl through the doggy door. <laughs> <laughs> so I whoop, uh, pop Slip out of the doggy through. door. And we had this gate in on the side of our house that was pretty tall. And you'd have to open it from the inside of the house. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm going to just leave this gate open so that when I come back from smashing, I don't have to jump. I don't it. have to jump out of the gate. Yeah. Right. That was my biggest mistake because that's oh. what got me caught. And then I remember. <clears throat> I thought I was being smooth with this girl. I was like, I'm going to set this alarm here just in case I fall asleep. I, I want to get home before my parents wake up. So I set an alarm for something and put my phone off to the side. And then it dings. And I'm like, don't worry about that girl. That's the alarm. So I put it on silent. I get back to making out or whatever and watching more of The Office. Ah, Don't worry about that. But like I And I put it down and then. It happens a third time. And I'm like, that's weird. Why is that happening? And I look at my phone and it says, Dad Ramirez. Oh. And I'm like, oh. the only thing I could do is laugh because I'm thinking, oh my I'm gosh. So I'm so scared. <laughs> I'm so scared about whatever is about to go down right now. So I just told that girl, I was like, I got a dip. I'm out of here. I got to hey, go. Hey, girl, so it's I, been a fun night. So but... I snuck out of the house. Because her family was home. Yeah. And then I answered my dad, and he was like, <gasps> I had the phone like, Where are you? He was like, Where it's like are you? The Where phone the is fuck like, are you? Yeah. And he was driving a Prius at the time. <laughs> so he's just driving the <laughs> And I remember it pulled right up. <laughs> and, and I just remember I was sobbing, like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, he, and he parked. Got out of the car, opened the door for me. He's a gentleman. My dad's a gentleman. And was like, get in the car. Got in and just slammed his Prius door like the little... So angry. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> Don't we, make that we, smolder. We drove, we drove <laughs> home. And I remember we got home. And uh, my... I was still like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, my, right. parents, my parents were big at that time in my life. They were big on taking away my phone. Oh, okay. Like, I'm in trouble, take away his phone. Mm-hmm. And that, and honestly, that sometimes worked. Sometimes I was like, ah, I don't care, whatever. But, but my, I remember my, my mom thought I was so distraught that she was like, you're going to sleep with me because she thought I was going to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, why were you crying so much? No, no I was because I was so scared of what was going to happen. He didn't say anything. My dad didn't say a word. That, he was a yeller. Like, as a kid, he was a yeller. Oh, he so the fact that he was just so silent. The fact that he was said like, nothing, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> What is he gonna do? He's he was gonna be like, yeah, I don't, I don't know what was yeah, gonna happen. That's so, so I so funny. I but, it's so, but, it was, but the funny part about it was that that was kind of the turning point in my life of me like maybe going to my local high school or going to all boys school. That was the thing that was like okay, all you're going to all boys school. And then <laughs> I didn't have a phone for the rest of that time. So going into my freshman year, I was like the one kid where I was like, yeah, I don't I don't have a phone. <laughs> But I never had one. Like, <laughs> it's not I've a weird never thing. Never had one. <laughs> I would I would walk around with an iPod or something like that and be like, Yeah, you guys got kick? Yeah. <laughs> no, like, y'all got what's your school email? <laughs> email I'll email you. you. Um, but yeah, that was probably that probably as I think about it, that probably was the worst thing that I did as a kid. That it had a big trajectory on on my life. I would I I don't know if I would have gone to that school, made oh those friends, gotten Cobra Kai, 
you know, yeah. smashed all the hoes that I have. All the guys, yeah. All the guys. Well, <laughs> yeah, I was in all boys school. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was a very big turning point in my life. Wow, I never, I never got caught sneaking out. I mean, don't get me wrong. There were a few times I snuck out before that. Oh! Before I got <laughs> <laughs> that was just the time you got caught. Your dad's like, <laughs> I mean, that's that's the rule, right? It's not the first time it yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah, it's the yeah, first yeah. time you, you never get caught. caught. But anyways, that's so but, funny. But um, yeah, I think that was that was about it. In high school, I was just a, I was just so, I don't, I don't know. I was just a, I was an interesting kid in high school. I love you, like. Hold on. Hey, Got to clear the room though, yeah, and let everybody twisted. know that. Don't get it twisted. I snuck out multiple. I, times. I was a fool, but I was a foolish fool. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's get let's get into some other subjects. Let's get into some current events. Some pa pa pa. Some some what's been going on? The haps. Wait, fofoca, fofoca. Ah, there's not really. Is there any fofoca? Um, the Miles Morales movie is gonna come out this week. Oh, that's sick. Into the Spider Verse two, the across Spider-verse the Spider Verse. Excited for that. I think I don't know anyone who's not excited for that. Like I feel like that's just objectively going to be a great movie, and it's going to do so well in the box office. I think it'll. I think it'll be banging. I'm excited. I hope more people start watching animated stuff. I think this is a really good segue. All the Marvel people, all the. What are some kids. adult animated movies that you can think of that are American? Any uh well the romance ones are are like YA, I mean like, the Boondocks I guess that's kind of an adult animation. Sausage yeah. Party. Sausage Party. Oh, yeah, Sausage Party was... is definitely adult. That they was... play at the gym and it's weird. They what? What? They at play the Sausage gym? Party at the gym and it's just weird. <laughs> you're just oh, on like... the elliptical. Yeah. And that like three minute end scene is going yep. on. You're like, oh gang, mm-hmm. I don't. This is look the like drop that. set. You're... <laughs> the drop set. That's funny. I don't. Adult animated movies? I guess there's not a lot. No. So maybe that's why? Maybe that's why. Damn it. Um, but there's that. I saw... I'm excited. I'm wondering where the... There's this movie coming out. The creator... Uh, was it... Is it Lee Isaac Chung? No. Gareth. Gareth Edwards. Gareth Edwards. Yeah. Gareth sorry, Edwards. Gareth. I'm sorry, sure, Gareth. And I'm wondering if we'll... With John David Washington. Yeah, with John David Washington. I'm wondering when we're going to get a good movie with AI. All of the AI movies are super, like, end of the world. We have to battle AI. But I think that's kind of just manifesting. What do you mean manifesting what? I'm wondering if, because right now they have certain AIs that are, like, that they have programmed to try to develop. And inherently, they kind of gravitate towards what is better for the AI isn't necessarily what's good for human race. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that's just because of, like, what that's about. All of the media that we consume where everyone's like, iRobot, Black Mirror, Her, all that type of stuff. stuff. Have you ever seen After Yang? No. With Colin Farrell? Colin Farrell, yeah. Um, That's like a happy AI movie. Okay. I don't know, I wouldn't say it's happy, but it's not like the AI is going to kill But Ex Machina, all of those are like, AI inherently will just be like, let's use... The human test skin suits. The the argument in all of those movies, though, is always like the humans are detrimental to the planet. They hurt themselves, so therefore we need to kill all humans because it's horrible. But we uh, are, aren't we? No, yeah, they're, they're, they're totally right. Oh, they're okay, okay, okay. No, okay. yeah, no, they're totally right. I'm just saying that's the the thing in every single one of those movies. So then, Eagle Eye, iRobot, all those, all those things. So if you were to have an, would you ever have an AI? No. Like a buddy AI? No. No type of AI for you. No, unless, unless like the AI like was able to like take the shape and like physically manifest into like a Pokemon. Okay. Then, like, okay. Probably. Okay. But if, I don't know. If it was a talking fox robot, that would be pretty sick actually. Speaking English? Or Japanese, that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. I walk into every restaurant, just can't understand it at all. Yeah, I walk into every restaurant, it's like, oh, hi, it like speaks for me in Japanese. That'd be sick. Yeah, that could be that could be cool. Yeah, but, but then okay, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. As I just, would you have an AI? I don't, it just sounds really like a lonely. floating phone. Lonely? 
Yeah, it just sounds really lonely. To... Oh, you think that would like isolate yourself? Totally, yeah. If you Why? had if you had someone that you know would talk to you every single second of the day, boom, there you go. Incels never see any of those guys again. Those you guys don't are see never them anyway. Getting... Right, but that's because right now, like, and I don't want to speak for the modern incel, but the modern incel is like <laughs> the mo- the woman is or a man is evil. You know, because they they don't like they demonize the woman because the woman likes a guy who looks different and is is you know into bodybuilding or the, has oh, yeah, money yeah. and this stuff. So then, so then they reject the women before they even get a chance to yeah to get rejected, right? So defense mechanism. So I don't know if it's that's the same thing as so so then those people, those all those guys will just use the AIs and and already like Snapchat has it. Snapchat has something right now oh, where, the you have, AI. where you have like a, a an AI that you can I don't I don't know much about it but it's it seems like a already it's like I'm a sh- friend yeah you can talk to I'm sure really soon, soon enough there'll be well yeah it's it's kind of just adding on to the all of the the like Chat GPT all of those things making them more personable. It's the wave, dude. I'm telling you, in the next couple of years, next five, ten years, we're gonna have a phone that's gonna be complete, like <coughs> Siri, but built through all of it. Talk. I don't it. even use Siri on my phone. I don't have Siri activated on my phone. Right, but just imagine if you didn't have to say. Well, yeah, I don't know. I I kind of I'm curious. I want to know if we're gonna get the Google Glass or the Apple Glasses. They're talking about that's kind of the next thing that they're implementing instead of, um. VR, AR, so that instead of oh you know, augmented kind of reality, into instead a, of a whole yeah. new place having it blend in it's with augmented. the real world. Yeah, I'd, I'd I'd like something like that. Some fucking shinigami eyes. Give me those. <laughs> would you Would you use something like that? I don't know. I feel like that has to be bad for your eyes. Like having something right here that you're focusing on, or As like opposed to looking. Right? Well, no, that's objectively bad for your eyes too. I would definitely use the augmented reality thing. That's just cool. I don't know. I feel like that would be sick. Like, what if you're, like, farsighted and you have the Google Glass Ooh, on? Ooh, you zoom in? Bop, no, bop, like, bop. like, you oh. can't see from, like, close up and then you have, like, the augmented, you know, Google Glasses on and, like, you have, like, notification, like, right here. Oh, like, yeah. oh shoot. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yo, that's kind of well, what. I mean, that's, like, some Black Mirror stuff right there. Where you're my, just like, yeah. My dad had uh, an electric car for a little bit and... It was it was actually pretty sick because your speed limit and like your gas and all that stuff was projected out. Yeah, onto the, the road. heads up display. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it was like through the windshield. It looked like yeah, it was really yeah, far yeah, away. Yeah. I'm sure they would do something similar to that for the for the AR type stuff. Um, that would be sick. I don't know. I I just I think something like that is really useful. I think when you get into like having an AI that starts doing things for you and like cutting out a lot of like. <clears throat> I was talking hey, yo, to set this email for me. Hey yo, I need you to send this email for it'd be like the the ultimate helper. I mean, those are sort of like what is that called? Like uh ease of life updates. Like I think that's okay, but I was talking to a friend's dad and he's a producer and we we're talking about the writer strike and all this stuff and just talking about how AI and chat B- GPT and how all of these things are gonna start like, AI can't write out a perfectly full-fledged script that's beautiful and has all these minute details and all this stuff, but it can write a kind of janky first pass that you can then go in and, like, put all your little fine details in and do all the little touches to make the dialogue better. So, but that first pass that it completes cuts out weeks, days, months, however long that normally takes, and cuts out a lot of jobs for writers. Like, why not use that? Like, when... Or like for actors, all they need is is three minutes of audio and visual to be able to like completely take your face and like take your body and like your voice and everything and be able to implement you into whatever you want. And then that AI version of you doesn't get sick, doesn't get moody, never forgets its lines. Like So we're just gonna turn into like Wally people. <laughs> well, but hey, but I don't know if it's gonna be like that because because with that I think the opposite. Gamers are going to be big and buff because they got those they got those treadmills, those 360 treadmills that those motherfuckers are having VR goggles running their 
waists are like strapped into the the gravity belt so that they're running on the treadmill <laughs> with their guns, looking around with the VR, bah, 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 <laughs> running, up, uh, running up the hill. Bah, bah, bah. I think they're gonna be fit, bro. I think I think esports is about to be like oh insane. Yeah. No, I think what's gonna happen is technology is gonna get so freaking advanced that you're gonna plug something into your brain matrix style it's gonna read like oh i want to move my legs and oh, not oh, send the signal to your ready legs. Player one just, style. you just just yeah yeah like short out online yeah so like wally yeah wally? yeah like wally you know the thing just fucking sucks into your head right but those people like, can't ah. move those people don't move ever yeah they, yeah why they, why they would you to need to move they had to if you're in super cool augmented reality where Water's purple and the sky's green. You can pee your bed whenever you want. Yeah, you can pee your bed whenever you want. You don't feel it. You don't have to worry about it. No worry about cleaning. Yeah, and there's going to be little AI servants walking around taking care of all of us while we're all like mm, playing. Oh, well, why can't games. they just do that on this fucking world? Gosh darn it. AI serious. little servants. We already see them. I already see them on Melrose. I really want to out food. What? It's Fuck you. Oh, those little bots that, that is deliver food? With oh, the yeah. dude, I've always wanted to, in Atlanta, they were trying out, I think two seasons ago, they were trying out like the Amazon delivery robots. Mm-hmm. And I always had the biggest urge to like go poof, and like, yeah. kick it over. Like, eh. There's always a person walking behind it. Making sure it gets safely. Making sure it gets there. Oh, gosh. I know. Who's that job? What? Yeah. yeah so what's the what's the point? <laughs> well, they were testing it out. Uh, they wanted to make sure it was getting where it needed to go, which was kind of interesting because I don't know why they didn't just like read the data. Like they needed a guy like, like walking. He would walk around with the iPad behind the So that motherfucker's robot. like, you don't kick it over. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's then what, He's too. back at the HQ going, God damn it. <laughs> we lost another one. It got kicked over. <laughs> but did you ever hear, this was like, this happened last year. Um, but one of the delivery robots somewhere in LA here, it was just minding its own business. And this girl, she gets run over by the delivery robot. Wait, how? She's laying on the she's, ground? She's just, just walking and the thing just like hits her and she just like, uh, you know, like with the car. Wow. And the the little um robot just keeps minding its own business, just keeps going. Yeah, it's like, do you think it's, it's being it's manned by someone? Whoa. No. Is it being manned? It's like, whoop. <laughs> I think it's like geolocation, uh. just like. This side, this is a sidewalk here. This is a crosswalk here. Probably has that. that it apparently has the same fucking Tesla equipment in it, just mm. running over children left and right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm with it. AI, if you're listening, you would get AI stuff. Um, I, I, I think I could see myself doing an AR type of deal. I think I could see myself doing something. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the Basilisk? The Basilisk? No. What oh. is that? Okay, I'm doing my due diligence, Kyle Hill. Um, You know who Kyle Hill is? Magic, Magic, Magic? Yeah. yeah. So he has this YouTube video called The Basilisk, and it's about this... It's like a true... Not a true. It's this uh theory that super far into the future, there's going to be this like all-knowing AI machine. Yep. And it will be able to know like all past, all present, all future. And... uh. I might be explaining it kind of wrong, but it will basically say you need to pledge your allegiance to the basilisk. If you don't, it's going to murder you. And it will know <clears throat> that there's like two options. Like if you've never heard of the basilisk before, like now the basilisk is here, you've heard about it, and you have to pledge your allegiance to it. <laughs> then if the basilisk gets there, and it, it'll know that like right now you've heard of the basilisk now because I'm telling you about it. <laughs> 40 years from now, if the basilisk is like, do you worship me? And you're like, no. She's like, you knew about me in 2023. I'm going to kill you. Wait, okay. I'm, I'm a little, still a little rusty on the, on the topic of the basilisk here. So I know about the basilisk now. Yes. So I have to decide in my head right now whether or not I want to join it or not join it. Yeah. Fuck the basilisk. You're going to die. <laughs> you're like, you're a goner. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You're I, pro- pledging allegiance to the basilisk? I don't want to die. All right. It says it's a godlike form of <laughs> artificial intelligence so dangerous that if you see it or even think about it <laughs> too hard, you will spend the rest of eternity screaming in its torture chamber. Wait, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Okay, so, uh, so now you know about it. But don't, it's false. I just said, about it. fuck the basilisk. Don't and I didn't get it. impaled. Well, you didn't think about it that hard. Oh, but then it. it says, <laughs> oh, then it says, even death is no escape. For if you die, the basilisk will, 
res- resurrect you and begin the torture again. Also, this this article says, warning, reading this article may commit you to an eternity of suffering and torment. So wow. now that we know, I think we just, now well, the basculus. Shit. As, soon as, the, as basculus. soon as the U.S. government is like, guys, we found the basculus. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing it before. before so the basilisk is just like Voldemort. Can't say it. Just Voldemort on steroids. Can't think it. Can't think it. <laughs> Can't even think it, bro. Well, we're screwed. But what's the basilisk's motive? World domination. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Naturally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's like he's like uh, he's like God in the way where like he lets everyone have free will to do what they want to do, but they don't actually have free will. But no, but if you use your free will wrong, but we don't you get have... smited with a holy flame. But. I thought we discussed this already. There is no free will. What do you mean? Because time isn't linear. All the decisions have already been made. There's there's a point in time where time has already moved so fast that what we're going through right now has already happened. So decisions already been made. We're just yeah. But who's not to say there's around. multiple dimensions, multiple timelines? <laughs> <laughs> on the next episode of <laughs> on the next episode of on the contrary, who's to say <laughs> on, the, on the contrary? On the contrary. Who's to say? <laughs> what? 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 That's like the most buzzwordy. Who's to say? Who's there's to not say? There's no multiple timelines. What does that even mean? <laughs> Literally, what does that even mean? Okay. Yeah, well, actually, that doesn't really make that much sense. Like, well, who's to say? Who's to that say? That was the equivalent of me being like, "You mean the water outside on that pool?" <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Who's well, no, you say? were saying that it's it's not linear, so everything has already happened, and, and I'm like. Well, if there's multiple and all, timelines. And all of those timelines have already happened as well. Yeah, but if there's infinite timelines, then there's infinite possibilities, and therefore we kind of do have free will. But we know that in this life right here, you're only going to go through one of them. So all of them have already been made. Well, you don't know that. Only the basilisk knows. Who's to say the basilisk doesn't have a different plan for me? <laughs> okay, let's end it there. <laughs> let's, let's, end that, let's end that episode there. Um, any other closing remarks, Jacob? Congrats to Millie Bobby Brown. I know we haven't given our due diligence to to Bobble Brown. And oh, Bobble got engaged. Bon Jovi, but she's engaged now, so shout out to her. All right, I guys. I got no more words. We got no more words. Yeah, we have no more words. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. You can email us at hello at lonelobos.com, or we have a phone number if you want to call in. If you call, you're automatically saying yes to having your voice on the podcast. It's 510-99-LOBOS. I don't know what the numbers are for that, so you can figure that out. They'll on be up little... on there. Yeah, yeah, it'll pop up above, over my eyes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then we also have an Instagram, Lone Lobos, and we don't have a Twitter. We have a Twitter. We have a Reddit. We have a Reddit, www.reddit.com forward slash Lobos r slash r dot com. No, but it's okay. I'd... Close. <laughs> And uh, like a if you're not watching R? this on YouTube, we have a YouTube as well, where you can find all the video. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bon Lobos. Mm-hmm. YouTube. Thank you. We'll catch you next week. Whee! This episode of Lon Lobos is a Lon Lobos production produced by Monica Tamayo and JMKM with intro music by Nicholas Gray. Like what you hear? Check us out on Instagram at Lone Lobos. <laughs>